Tomorrow we are live from the Players Championship. I guess I guess we're we're kind of live from the Players Championship uh, adjacent. Or are you uh, are you on property? Where are you staying down there, Smiley? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're over at this uh, Marriott Sawgrass. Uh, nice and close, which is nice. Last year it was. I was staying uh, like in Jack's Beach, which is a great area, but traffic mm-hmm. was terrible. So very happy to be making a shorter commute this week. I'm live from my attic as usual, but uh, a little bit envious of the. Although we get we get some nice weather here in North Carolina, golf season is man. We're so close, I can taste it. Things mm-hmm. things are and then blooming. They punch the greens, right? We don't punch till summer. Thankfully, right. uh, you're well, in Bermuda. We, you, you yeah, we're Bermuda. Okay. Your event, so look at us, worlds colliding. Uh, anyway, you all are here right now because you want a preview of the Players Championship, uh, the the fifth major, so to speak, uh, the best field in golf asterisk uh and we're here to provide that for you smiley you've been walking around uh the property all week long catching up with different pros putting with jordan spieth things of that nature what what do you got for us what's the, what's the boots on the ground report from ponte vidra uh well first off can you do i should have probably looked this up right before i came on here but <laughs> what is the course record at tbc sawgrass because i think it's going to get broken Google tomorrow it. morning wow and why I think it's, I mean, the I've never seen the greens in the soft. They are 60, Tom Hoagie, 62, 2023. Yeah. yeah. I think okay, somebody, so could, think, I got 11 under so many under, but I really do think that Scotty. somebody can, I think somebody's going to shoot 10 or nine under tomorrow. I do. I would love so much to see Scotty come out and shoot. 58 making 20 <laughs> foot bombs like i'm i'm going to be tiger now that would be electric oh yeah i mean wouldn't it i mean i think it's like an even par round is not a good score tomorrow i think the mm. the greens are going to be rolling perfectly we're not expecting a ton of wind tomorrow the, the the fairways are soft the rough is up uh so if you're missing missing fairways they've been getting a lot of dew in the mornings like it doesn't kind of dry out till about 10 30 so that along with some humidities definitely makes the golf ball probably not travel quite as far definitely they're being a little heavier but what it's done is just they the moisture in the greens from like a real heavy rain on last saturday which they got two and a half inches which is a lot um that combined with just the humidity and the dew is just not the greens have just not um, quite mm. dried out yet. I mean, I watched Alex Norn on number two today hit a hybrid and spin it back. It was just like, what am I watching? Um, it's it's very interesting now that you're going to have back pins and guys are worried about controlling their spin uh, where it's like it used to be what's my cover number to back pins. <laughs> so it's uh it's going to be a big adjustment for guys tomorrow morning and hopefully they dry out with maybe some drier weather as we go, but we're not expecting any rain in the forecast, but um, I'm expecting a pretty low cut. Where do you stand on March versus May for the players? Like it seems like there are opinions on both sides of that in terms of course difficulty and conditions. Where, where do you land on that? I think it, the golf course is going to look fantastic on television in March. Mm. And I think the players may prefer playing it in May just for the firmness that uh, it would provide the more of the jumpy Bermuda rough, the fast fairways, the fast greens, the warmer weather. So I think that's a, you know, from a playing side, I would say you got to, uh, you hit more like irons and three woods off tees and, and hybrids where now you hit a little bit more drivers, more three woods. So, you know, it's to me, I would say that I prefer it in May. Um, I, I think you can get it a little faster, but I think it looks so good on TV in March that if you had like one of those crazy weather days with some wind, it makes for some great television. But for instance, this week, it's just already soft here on Wednesday. It's in perfect shape. It's just not firm. So, um, I think you're going to see some low scores and and not too many high scores. Is it now? I know you're saying Thursday weather looks impeccable for scoring. Um, it, it's one of my favorite shots the last five years and, and conditions for a tournament the last five years was I'm trying to remember if it was it was the 2022 players. Um, J, did JT JT won in 21 and Cam Smith was 22? Do I have that right? And Scotty was 23? Or do that I have that out right. of order? 
I don't know. Yeah, but, it, whatever <laughs> the year was, I, I don't think it was the year JT won, but I think it was in the second round where there was an absurd amount of win. A bunch of guys were dumping balls in the water oh, on 17. Yeah, JT, dude, that was crazy. JT hit like a 210 yard five wood on 18. It was one of the sickest shots I've so ever sick. seen in my entire life. I was like, this guy, like, I don't care if he wins or loses. That's the only thing I'm going to remember from this tournament. So I'm curious, is it, does the rest of the week get tougher into the weekend? Or are we looking at like a historically low number for this tournament? Well, you know, we're getting some good weather where we're not quite getting we're, maybe some chances, some thunderstorms on the weekend, but 85 degrees on Friday. So we're, we're it's going to warm up. Um, you know, you still got to execute out there. I know I'm making it sound mm. like all these guys are going to go super low, but I mean, they're really good at what they do. So I just think with soft greens and perfect greens, um, the rest of we've seen the recipe anywhere. It doesn't matter what you do on as, unless the rough was really, really thick, which I think last week the rough was longer and more of a problem than this week. Now the uh, playing from the rough with soft greens, it's not quite as dicey on a Thursday and Friday as it used to be. So uh, you might be able to get away with a driver too, which which is uh, not something that you typically have out here at the players. Do you do you see any late, early, early, late advantage? Given the well, way there was things a cool are statistic. Uh, have you have you seen the stat about like who's? No. Um, let me let me find it real quick. You're gonna like this. Okay. Um, it right. just basically talked about. Um, champion starting times on Thursday and Friday in the players since 2007. They've only had two two players win the players in the late early wave. Everybody else has been in the Ooh. early late wave, which I think bodes well again early. this week. Is it because I'm trying to think tomorrow? Is it uh, who t- who goes off? Rory, Vic, and Jordan go off early tomorrow. They're mm-hmm. 835. I'm trying to remember feature group coverage. And then, well, so Scotty's late early, right? Yeah. So that's um, interesting. But so you're saying early, late's want to pay attention. Can, can anybody tell that? Well, it's uh, just, I mean, this went, is just historic, right? Like, this, week. <laughs> this is just historic data. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, is there something to that? I don't know. Um, I perf- per, uh, as a player, I liked the late early, you know, if you're playing well, because mm-hmm. it's just like, all right, we're just right back into a rhythm. Uh, but, yeah, something to be said for that, I guess. I don't know. It's good. Let's go look at your waves, people. Make sure you're uh, riding the right horses this week. Uh, I think that's that's a, a, a solid segue, unless there's other things you want to uh, cover course-related. We can do that after as well, player-related. But just looking at players we like this week, because, of course, we have to make our, our one-and-done picks. We have to recap the people on how we shook out last week and choose some names this week. But then also thinking of... You know, I'm I'm uh, I've got some DFS lineups I'm trying to put together here. You know, maybe you want to want to sprinkle here and there, and I'm, I'm trying to tap into your brain, Smiley, and get some intel <laughs> for some good plays this week. So, uh, do you, you want to get right into the one and done? Yeah, let's do one and done first. And I can't remember is it me or you this week? Let's see. It is you this week because I picked uh, I picked Jake Knapp first and Xander first. So this last week you took Rory. 87.5 FedEx Cup points. I took Xander. I got 65. I, I forget exact finishing position, but I think I want to say Rory was like T21 and Xander was like in the mid T20s, like seven, maybe okay. something like that. Sounds right. Okay. Uh, that having been said, you're still just slightly less than 400 points behind me. So thank Ooh, you. Jake not Knapp. great. Not great. Nap time. Uh, we're all, we're all this napping. is so. This is always such a weird leaderboard. In my my pick, I think is going to be a weird pick. Because I think you just kind of always see the most random stuff for this event. Um, God, actually, I say that and I'm like, God, how do you not pick Scotty Scheffler? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, how do you not pick Scotty after uh, the prior week? Um, golly, mm, I'm between like five guys right now. And I'm going can, to. Can s- I give you can I give you a little bit of extra prep here? This this might help you. Right. Okay, so I'm please. looking at our at our snake draft system and. So I was really hoping you mentioned Scotty Shelford. I was really hoping I was going to have the first pick at the Masters. You had the first pick at the Masters. Okay. So if that informs your strategy, use, that's probably I might just good use to know. Him there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, I know who I'm taking, and okay. I'll I'll let you first off figure out who it is. I'll let you almost play the guessing game. Um, okay. I'm picking a player that has he's not the best driver of the golf ball, but he's. He's been better this year. 
He's he's a great putter, a good iron player, very good around the greens, makes a bunch of birdies, and he's young. Not a good driver of a ball, good putter. He's getting better driving the ball. Good around the greens. And it's not an obvious choice. He's getting better driving the ball. Mm -hmm. But he's young. Like how young is young? Young. Man, yeah. this is this is a tough one. Okay. Cause because the broad strokes you're painting, I wanted to say Jordan, but I feel like this is not Jordan. No, younger. I feel like this is you younger. Go, you go for it. Let me get one more. Oh, let me get one more guess here. <laughs> let me, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm now I'm in on the game. Is it, could it be, but Sam Burns is a good driver of the ball. All right. I'm done guessing. What, who, who do you got for me? Uh, I'm, I'm going to take Sahith Thigala. Oh, interesting. Okay. I, I think the softness of the golf course is going to be nice for a player like him that is it's, it's going to stay in a little tighter if he has a bad day driving early in the week. Um, and to me personally, I, th I feel like he's a player that is going to get in contention in one of these big weeks. And he's been very close to doing it coming off a of top 10 Bay Hill where he drove it great. Um, he's like up in to like top 40 and with the driver of this year percentage wise. So it's like, Maybe you're catching a guy that has a really good driving week, the best driving week of his career, and then he does all the other stuff well. It's like, okay, he's got he likes playing shots. Um, he's had a great year thus far. Why not Sahith the Gala? I, I love it. I mean, I'm a huge Sahith fan. I mean, this is one of the guys who at the beginning of the year we talked about, like he could really pop this year. He could he won, he finally won mm -hmm. in the fall, last fall at the yeah. court net, and like maybe he gets a, a big win underneath this belt this year. So I think it's a had great had a chance one. of the century um, too, you know. Had a chance to say that's right. Lost by a shot yeah. to Chris Kirk. Um, Played good at Bay Hill. So, I mean, he's had a good start. Yeah, I mean, I, I I think it's and it's. I think I've heard a lot of people say it this week, and it's interesting. It's like this course doesn't really favor any certain type of player. It might have been Justin Thomas who was saying it today in his press conference, where a lot of different you know games and profiles could fit this course uh, in a lot of different ways. So I'm I'm looking at who I want to use here, and it's a, it's a you know a huge purse this week, and it's a ton of FedEx Cup points. I'm looking at like, you know, the rest of the majors and thinking I'll be able to choose some big live names there as well. So I want to go with the PGA Tour guy this week. Um, you know what? Like if I know the here's the tough part. It's like the bet I'm trying to make here is if you take Scotty at the Masters, where else would I use Scotty this year that's as high leverage as the Masters? And I'm between Scotty really and JT because I think JT is going to play great this week. But I, I'm going to go Scotty here because you were going to take Scotty Scheffler at the Masters. So I'm, so, I'm going to go ahead and get this one out of the way. Let me ask you this. So whenever sure. we pick these guys, like they're gone. Like okay. it, it gone. is that right? Like so, if you pick yeah. them, I it's not like I can pick them type of thing. No, 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 no. You can. It's just each of us can only use okay a just double one checking. time. All right. So yeah, so Scotty's off the table for me, but so that's why I was. But I'm, it's like else that Scotty, same week, the we Masters. Can't. We right. we're not allowed to pick the same guy the same week. Is what you're saying? Exactly. Okay. Yes. Cool. Within a week, that's why we do the we pick can't thing. make the same pick. Got it. All that's right. that's okay. <laughs> rub the speed. That's a little bit of a wrinkle. That's like a that's like a local rule addition. Okay. okay. <laughs> for most one and dones, you could take both of them the same week, but um, but I like that we have that rule. All right. So so hit and, and Scotty for this week. That's a good little. That's right. a good crew there. Um, it's gonna be absolutely hysterical if you burn Scotty and he like misses the cut. That would be so funny <laughs> Scotty <laughs> wins by five Scotty's gonna <laughs> he's, he's gonna carry the PGA Tour to the promised land and he misses the cut the week Charlie picks him in one and done <laughs> Scotty's gonna win four straight starts like just book it Scotty's gonna win he's yeah. gonna when this is all said and done he's gonna win out from here through the Masters oh, and God. Houston open on there I so I, hit, I so hit tees off at 213 oh my God Gosh, that just Ooh. looks ugly. That just is that like that's just that doesn't a, align ugh. with our. I was hoping to see noise. like seven forty nine tomorrow morning is what I was hoping to read. <laughs> well, let's let's look at that. Let's go ahead and just spin through that that morning, the late early wave. I mean, so we're looking for early wave guys, right? So right now, Sam Burns, Xander Schauffele, Tommy Fleetwood, Victor Hovland, Rory McIlroy, Jordan Spieth, all those got Ludwig Ober. I like, I like what do you, what do, you this do, week. do you like Ludwig here? I love Ludwig. Love him. Really? Yes. 
like him a lot. Because he hasn't really, I don't want to say he's had a bad year, but he has just been a little bit quiet in some of these first opportunities of playing big events. To be fair, I think he almost had a chance to win the signature event at Pebble if it weren't for Wyndham. That's going, right. Going nuts, you know? Like he could have easily love to see that. On he Sunday. could have easily been a 54 hole champion at, at Pebble Beach this year, you know, with finish in second place. Uh, played with, uh, played with Rory one of those days. And from what I understand, he, he, he looked as good or better than Rory, um, out there at Pebble. So, uh, talked to him a little bit this week. His game, uh, looks good. That it seems like they're, they're in a really good place, that team. So Ludwig's a guy that honestly I probably should have picked, but, Whatever. <laughs> Use them later. <laughs> the, the picks are binding now. They cannot be changed. As teased earlier, I got to put together a DFS lineup. And I'd love to just pick your brain a little bit. Uh, so I I just shot over. Well, if we just run through it in terms of, of price categories, um, I just want to throw some ideas at you and, and see. So, I mean, starting at the top of the board, your, let's see, your top, your four most expensive players are Scotty Scheffler, Rory McIlroy, Xander Schauffele, Justin Thomas. Okay. Um, Scott, Scotty's twelve thousand eight hundred. Rory's eleven thousand six hundred. Uh, Xander eleven thousand three hundred. And then you, everything else is underneath ten thousand dollars. Yeah, like Xander's can't third. Right there. Xander's third. Yeah. Wow. That's Does that surprise you a little bit? Me. Yeah, really surprising. Here's what I'm thinking: is like I kind of some weeks I try to kind of balance my lineup. But I'm kind of feeling like I want to go top heavy here. Like I feel like you, if you don't put Scotty in your in your lineup, you're going to get burned. Like I just think it's a bad idea to not put Scotty in your lineup. So can we just plug Scotty in yeah, right off the top? It. Are you okay uh, with that? Yeah, okay. yeah. I can I can help fill the gaps in a little bit here for you. So then let's go here. Like if we go, what if we go JT? I mean, it's too can we, high. Can we work players. our way from the like bottom? Better. Can we work our let's way go like from love it from the bottom? Um. S- so you want to go bottom, bottom. So let's go. <laughs> the bottom well, is how I mean, far uh, down. Do you let me just give you some names that I like. Great. Love it. I like a player like Corey Connors this week. Okay. I think Corey. $8,300. Um, let's plug him in. Yeah. Plug, plug Corey in. I just think that a player like Corey just always finds the middle of the fairways, finds the greens and catch a good hot putting week. And he's right there. Um, and I think it's just an important week to drive the golf ball well. And having a guy like Corey Connors, it's like, all right, you got a guy that's making the cut, you know? Right. Like done deal. You're, you're, yeah. you're going to, and I think, and that's big too. Like a made cut in this, in this format gets you just, no, no matter how good or bad they play on the weekend, you're going to collect points and not like lose in whatever league you've entered. I know. Um, or who are some players that you kind of like uh, as we kind of look into all this? So as I was kind of putting rough lineups together, because I went top heavy with like Scotty and 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 JT, um, I kind of went down on the lower side of things, and I'm trying to see how far I, I picked. Um, Ricky Fowler had a really nice price on him, seventy three hundred or seventy three thousand, yeah, seventy three hundred dollars. Golly, I'm so bad at math, but past <laughs> champ, um, and and a guy that you know I feel like is. Like I, I, I feel good about Ricky making the cut, and like I know he hasn't maybe been playing his best golf for the or the goal, you know where he was last summer when he won the right. Rocket Mortgage and maybe felt better about his game then. But for a guy that's priced, I mean, let me let me I'll say it this way: here are the guys that are around Ricky Fowler, Christian Bizet now, Emiliano Grillo, Eric Van Royen, and Alex Noren, all great like, players. I like but Eric I'm like Van Royen. You like you like Eric this week? Yeah, I do. I like Nick Taylor too. More, Okay. But can Let's we have here. two Canadians on our team? Is that against your, like, do you have like a rule against only one? I don't have Canadian? a nationality based rule. In fact, <laughs> when I did this game uh, for the Canadian Open last year, I made a lot of money because I only picked Canadians. <laughs> <laughs> Just did. Well, Nick, Corey Connors, Taylor Pendrith, Adam Svensson, the whole gang. McKenzie the whole Hughes place is fun. green, man. It, it's, it reminds me of Phoenix. It reminds me of Augusta. And Nick Taylor played really well in Phoenix this year. Uh, to me, it's I like the fact that he's won already this year. Nick Taylor is a player I probably like him more than Corey Connors, honestly. 
Um, so here, here let, me, let me just kind of show you what we're working with thus far because we have we have Corey Connor, Scotty Scheffler, Nick Taylor, and Eric Van Roy. Unless we want to dump one of these guys, so basically we have an average of seventy three hundred dollars to spend right now. So we could go super high or yeah. super low, or we could pick two players right around Ricky Fowler. Could we take a Ludwig? Where would he go? Let's take a Ludwig. So he's ninety three hundred dollars. So he's, uh, is that so that expensive? leaves us that that's. That's more expensive than, like, it, like it basically it, the 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 rest of the money we have left to spend is fifty four hundred dollars. Scotty, is that Scottie one more Sheffler guy or two really, more guys? That's one more guy. So we're like Uh-oh. talking about like Matt Kuchar, Gary Woodland, Martin Laird, like Lee Hodges, okay. Michael Kim, that sort of that sort of line. So we could either drop, we could drop like a, a higher price player. Let's drop a Canadian. Flush. Let's pick one Canadian okay. here. Let's drop Corey Connors. <laughs> Unless, oh, unless, wow. unless you want to drop Nick, Nick Taylor. Taylor's more affordable. Nick Taylor's more affordable. I let's drop Corey just so we can okay. have a little more flexibility. Okay, because Corey has, has made all of his cuts this year, but Nick Taylor has two top tens. So okay, I like, like a mannequin trend. What so now about, we have like where? What if we took Russell Henley in there? Oh, I love that. Just scroll past his name. He's actually he's priced pretty high Is because he? he's you know, his form has been so good. Eighty six hundred dollars. Okay, so. Yeah, I mean we can do it, but it just means we're going to spend like fifty two hundred on our last player, which isn't the end of the world. But uh, I mean, what do you? Let me let me throw one at you. What do you feel? How do you feel about Minwoo Lee having played in the final group last year? Do you like Minwoo this week or, or or not? Not right now. I I like him more this week than I did last week, and okay, I I like that he plays the ball down on the ground. Um, well, how expensive is he? He's eight thousand. He's eight thousand. So you save six hundred on Henley, yeah. So who would you who would you be picking between with him? Like, would you be taking Russell out and picking Minwoo? Is that kind of what you're saying? Right, right. You probably take either Russell or Minwoo. Okay. Um, I think I, I would probably lean Russell, but I just think his iron game is just just so legit that I tell you, I'll tell you what we should do. Let's let's take Russell. I think we should take Scotty out. I okay. think we take Scotty out because you're because the one that says Scotty's that we, like you started this whole thing saying it'd be <laughs> stupid for us not to take Scotty, and now we have to completely change our philosophy because you're like, nah, we ain't taking Scotty. <laughs> well, Scotty's like the free bingo space. You know, it's almost like we need to free up more money so we can talk about some guys people are probably considering at certain levels. Because I'll say it this way: here, <laughs> here are your options. If if you have the amount of money left that we do right now, Maddie Schmid, Dylan Wu, Robbie Shelton, Carl Yuan, Joel Damon, Grayson Murray, Davis Riley, Francesco Molinari. I mean, I, you know, you tell me if someone's ringing a bell for you, we can do it. Hayden Buckley, he made ace last year. So there you go. maybe just maybe ride the, ride the way. <laughs> um, I mean, if you want to, rest- I, the thing is, it's like we got to start over if, if, if you don't take Scotty. So, yeah. Because then now you got to like find two horses at the top that you want to take, which then gets a little, little well, let confusing. Me, let, me, let me run you through. Let me run you through our team right now and our prices, and then we can see who we wanted to fill this thing out, or if we want to kind of make some roster moves. Right, Scotty's top of the board, twelve eight. All right, Ludwig is nine three. Then you got Russell eight six. And then you've got Eric Van Royen, 7'3", and Nick Taylor, 6'9". So that's kind of your spread. So, so you know, if, you if, took you're, if you're out, nudging me in a direction. Take? Well, if it was me, oh, it is I'd you. probably plug in JT. <laughs> okay. It is me. Yeah. Yeah. If it, <laughs> it literally is me. So, I mean, I, I would be plugging in JT here. And then that gets us $7,300. And that gets us right where I can take Ricky. So okay. then all of a sudden... Our, our lineup, but, but there's also, there are some other options in there. There's like Jake Knapp is, is in that range too. I feel like Jake, I mean, he, he made a 12 last week and that really making a 12 doesn't help. But uh, do you think last week was more of just playing at a really, really tough signature event for the first time? Or like yeah. um, he's just exhausted playing so many weeks in a row. It's, it's just new golf courses and new challenges. I think we'll have a good week, but there, uh, what are some of the other options outside of Jake? Uh, some other ones at that 7,300 level, Nikolai Hoygaard, uh, Steven Yeager, who played great at the beginning of the year, Alex Norn, you were just talking about watching him play a little yeah, bit, um, yeah. Cam Davis, um, Denny McCarthy. 
I this like guy's too many people that range. right now. I like entirely too I know many you, people. What about Matthew Bavon? Do you like do you like him? I mean, he's just been so steady all year long. <laughs> yeah, totally. First time though, players just tough. Hard to say. Hard to say, Charlie. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> give me like a either or. These are two. Like I, I, I can make cases for all these guys. So <laughs> give me like a, a two that you're between and I'll, I'll help you. If you're between a Jake Knapp and a Ricky Fowler, which way are you going? Mm. But Ricky. Yeah. I would okay. take Ricky there. Pass champ. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah, I mean, look, I think this is a solid lineup. I think I think do you want to blow it up. Do you hate it? You you don't you don't like it, do you? <laughs> Read it out. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's JT Ludwig, uh, it's uh, Russell Henley, Ricky Fowler, Eric Van Royen, and Nick Taylor. And I, I, pitch, I just I think the problem I'm picturing the leaderboard, and I see a scenario in which they're all in the top six. <laughs> You think all these guys are top six? <laughs> no, I just I like that. If that's what I, you're I do. I do like Nick Taylor and Eric Van Roy, and I think there's something to be said about guys that are in form. Those are two players that that are in form, uh, in my opinion. And and there's just no history. I I mean, I think yeah, the, we've seen guys you know win here, but also that it's not a you, you got to show up and be able to hit the shot. So I I kind of like the guys that are that have been proving it this year. So maybe uh, do, do you care to look at a Sahith Thigala? <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's, my one and let's, try it. <laughs> let's try it. Let's try the gala. I'm wondering who we're going to need to pull. For it would the be gala. hilarious if we didn't put one of our one and dones in and they win <laughs> in, the, in the, in your lineup. <laughs> Let me, I'm, I'm going to pull, I'm going to pull Ludwig just for the sake okay. of, yeah, Paul, we're, we're, we're trying to figure out where he's cut. The gala is eight, seven. Okay. That's actually interesting. So now we have six hundred extra dollars to spend. So we have JT Thigala, Russell Henley. I'm starting to like this lineup. Ricky Fowler, Nick Taylor, Eric Van Royen. What I think okay. we should do is we should pull one of uh, Ricky EVR, yeah. and Nick Taylor, definitely and upgrade at one of those. So okay. what, who do you, who would you pull if it's you? Um. I would say the, who's in the best form of those, or who's in the worst form would be Rick of the three. Yeah, but, but you, you kind of right, so, like Rick, so that's kind of your your play this week. Oh wow! How about this though? That just made Tom Hoagie available, who we just discussed. Shot sixty two here, the course record. Take Tom Hoagie, dude. In. Yeah, Plug Hoagie or JT Poston? Huh? Hoagie or JT Poston? Uh, I like them both. But I would mm. lean Hoagie. Had a good week at Bay Hill. So you got guys. You got Hoagie, wow. Nick Taylor, Eric Van Royen. Look at this. Russell Henley, all in good form. And then you got some guys that can go like some killers. You got JT and uh, and Sahithi Gower. It's a strong lineup. I, I really it's a hope. strong lineup. I, you know what's going to happen? You're going to be so close to like winning it all in, in my one and done pick. So it's going to miss the cut. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. <laughs> and Aberg finishes is in a playoff with one of these guys or something like that. <laughs> so maybe that's where we went wrong, but I, I, I like your line. I like it. Yeah. I'm so read it off it. one more time. Okay. So one more time. So this is, oh, great. Hold on. Now I just, uh, now I just made it go away. Here we go. Okay, here we go. We're, we 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 got to back up. So, oh no! All right, hold on. We're gonna have to do it all over again. This is so bad. All right. So it's that's when it's you know JT. it's when it's when it's when DraftKings takes it down because they're they're a little concerned that you that you know the results type of thing. You know what I mean? They they must. I, I think definitely agree. Our lineups too flame and hot. <laughs> I, I think it's it's really as we continue to draft, it really all came together. Here we go. Okay, I got it back now. I got it back now. All right, we have JT ten thousand six hundred. We have Sahit the Gala eight thousand seven hundred. We have Russell Henley eight thousand six hundred. Tom Hoagie seven thousand eight hundred. Eric Van Royen seven thousand three hundred. Nick Taylor six thousand nine hundred. I fell in love with that lineup. Yeah. Best of luck As to we you, molded bro. it. We molded it like clay. I I'm saving this. We're go we're going in. All right, here we go. Contest entry updated. <laughs> That's gonna pay some bills. That's gonna pay some real bills. Uh do you have any other any other like plays you like this week? Any other like, you know, 
guys that are just like stone cold, like they're going to absolutely be this this week. Is there like prop bets for like the cut line? Because I would say the cut line is going to be low. I think it'll be, shoot, in the past it's been, oh, it could be over par here. And I don't know what it's been the last couple of years, but I'm curious if that's like a prop because I would, I would take the, uh, the under on that. You know, what I'm seeing now is I, I see certain player odds for players to make or miss the cut, but I'm not seeing like a what's the cut line going to be. I'm seeing, uh, uh, let's see, some winning margin bets uh, uh, to be in final group. I, I'm, st- I'm still kind of getting this whole. I'll tell you what, let me throw a few at you. The hole in one on hole 17. No. <laughs> yes. Minus 360. Yes. yes. Plus 250. Yes. Hammer. Yes. yes. <laughs> We're going to see one. There was three last year. It, you know. It's I'm going to be there be. Friday. We better have a hole in one. I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> oh, man. So have, have you sketched out Friday any further with kids? Anything you want to tease? No, but I need to start thinking of a hole in one line if when it goes in for me on Friday afternoon. <laughs> Can we start? Let's get some comments uh, on what, what my Friday afternoon line needs to be if uh, oh, man. somebody makes a hole in one. We have Roger Maltby and Gary Cook back this week. So I'd like to suggest, can we do like some sort of variation of better than most? <laughs> like, is there a smiley, a smiley fied version of better than most that we can land on? Mm. Some to think about. We don't have to come up with an answer now. That's what all you good people listening are for. I'm sure you'll tweet smiley, you know, comment on his Instagram reels, whatever. Just give him some suggestions. You know, here's my idea. It's up. like, we're, we're kind of on happy hour and it is an island. Maybe it's we're on island time now, something like that. Is that it? We're on island time now. That could be the. That's maybe that's good. it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's a that's a great start. We'll all find out together. Friday happy hour. You, Kevin Kisner. Uh, same same time frame for people like the four to six p.m. window. Yeah, something is, like that. Last week. Yeah, something like that. Any, mm-hmm. any guests you want to tease yet or still still waiting? Working on, on it. Working on it. Can't tease it. Love it. No yeah. teases. That's yeah. right. Well, you have to tune in to find out. Uh, well, that's what we got for you all. A uh, little, little sawgrass preview. And uh, appreciate you all watching and listening. And we'll be back here with the recap of the tournament uh, soon. I've actually watched a couple of episodes of, of, of y'all earlier, and uh, you guys have some good takes. So thanks for, uh, thanks for what you guys do. It's cool to see what you guys are doing. And uh, I, I know golf fans appreciate it, but we, we do too. So please keep it up. I think you're doing a tremendous job. And, and you know, I listen to this podcast. It's really cool. And-